We are concerned with image creation for vector graphics, with a particular focus on light and shade. For this, we propose shading curves, which associate shading profiles to each side of the input curve. From these, surfaces are generated and combined with original flat color image to produce the final result. Here is an example of a simple curve created in our user interface. Each curve has attributes on either side, which we distinguish by associating colors green and red to each side of the curve. These attributes are extent, strength and shape. Extent defines the extent of the shading profile in the image plane. Strength defines the strength of the shading at the curve. Positive values will make colors brighter for lighting and negative values will make colors darker for shade and shadows. Optionally, colors can be associated to create colored profiles. Finally, the shape attribute defines the shape of the shading profile and therefore defines how the color propagates out from a given curve. These shading profiles are modeled as cubic subdivision curves in a separate window. From these three attributes, control meshes for cut McClark subdivision are defined. The control meshes we defined are relatively simple with few extraordinary vertices. We therefore get smoothly looking surfaces after only two levels of subdivision. These surfaces are finally applied to the image using the depth map in an off-screen OpenGL rendering process. We propose two kinds of curves for drawing light and shade with vector graphics, boundary and slope curves. Slope curves define a single smooth surface appropriate for specular highlights and cast shadows. The boundary curve associates one surface on each side of the curve. Therefore, boundary curves typically create a shading discontinuity across the curve. Here's an interactive example of adding some slope and boundary curves to an existing axe. In this example, we demonstrate how shape profiles affect lighting. Slope curves defining specular highlights are typically defined by bell-shaped profiles. By visualizing the complete grid onto the image, the artist is able to see where the shading falloff is located by looking at the vertices of the intermediate shape control points. Stronger strength is here added to a few control points, changing the sense of the overall lighting in the scene. In this chiaroscuro style image, shading out from the boundary of the apple is used to depict a cast shadow onto the table. Here are some more results and various visualizations of the subdivision surfaces. Note that these surfaces only work as intermediate representations and the users are not concerned with neither the surfaces themselves nor their defining control meshes.